I appreciate brother and sister Estes, their lives that they live, their friendship, their consistency. And brother Estes is, is always a man that preaches the word, and I appreciate that. Amen. We're going to turn the service over to the, them tonight. Amen. Amen. You love the Lord tonight? Amen. I do. I thank the Lord for His goodness. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to preach here tonight and share the word of the Lord. Believe God to touch us. Amen. And you know, the Word of God will make the difference. It's truth. It's life. It's amazing. This thing, it discerns the thoughts and intents of the heart of man. You know, I, 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 I realize, you say, well, Brother Estes, wickedness is going to wax worse. I realize that. That's exactly true. That's what the Word of God said would happen. Sure it will. But I do believe wherever there is truth, there is a hope that that community can live and, and thrive again. In fact, today I found myself praying this morning, Father, for every community that has a church that's preaching truth, that's lifting up the bloodstained banner, Lord, if there's a church that's there, let that community be livable again. Let that community be livable again. Friend, we're living in a world today that it's just absolutely it's becoming uh, more of a savage society than we've ever seen before. But God's Word changes those things. I was just in El Salvador. I'll be quickly. Uh, but I was just in El Salvador at the beginning of this month. Brother Craig Benner and myself had an opportunity to go there. And I was able to preach in a church that just two months before, there was a, a, the pastor there, his son, was shot to death by the drug cartel dealers that uh, decided to move into that village, and they told that pastor, they said, well, if you don't start paying us money, you know, we're, we'll, we'll do something vicious to you. And he said, well, number one, we don't have the money. And number two, it's not God's will for us to give you that money. And they took that young man's life right there as he was praying at the altar one morning. And they thought that would have been enough to scare that pastor away. But that heartbroken pastor stayed right in that community and has stayed in that community and has continued to preach the Word of God and it has, such, has had such an effect on that entire community that they're saying this is truth and this is life. And whatever this Word of God says, this man believes it. It cost that man his son, but we want to hear it. Now, friend, I don't know what it may cost you and me, and God forbid it be something that tragic, but I do know that where God's Word will simply go forward, it will pierce the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. And friend, principalities and powers and rulers of darkness in this world cannot stand against the truth and the light of God's word. Do you believe that tonight? Can we just slip up our hands one more time to heaven and thank God for his divine word. Amen. Sister Eric, would you sing for us tonight? hurt somebody's aching somebody's trying to find a way a heavy heart can break your will a troubled soul leaves time standing still so if you're hurting, please don't hide. Lift up your head, I'm on your side. When every mountain seems too high, when every Sometimes weak, I still believe my life is built on this desire through the flood and through the fire. Jesus rescues me. I know you're looking. 
looking for an answer searching for some hope to hold empty hands will leave you waiting and praying for a miracle but Jesus hears your every cry he sees the walls that you can't climb he can heal your hurting soul and lead you safely to his home when every mountain seems too high when every Sometimes weak, I still believe My life is built on this desire Through the flood and through the fire Jesus rescues me When every mountain seems too high When every Sometimes weak, I still believe My life is built on this desire Through the flood or through the fire Jesus rescues me Going through so many changes What's the news for today? Somebody's hurt, somebody's aching. Somebody's trying to find a way. A heavy heart can break your will. A troubled soul leaves time standing still. Oh, but if you're hurting, please don't hide. Lift up your head, I'm on your side. When every mountain seems too high, when every
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Sister Erica. Please, let's take God's Word tonight and turn to the book of Psalms, chapter 127. Psalms tonight, the 127th division. Now, my assignment tonight allows me to deal with the family, the home. And I'm always, I'm always honored uh, to be able to, uh, to speak on this subject if we ever afforded this opportunity. And, it, and first of all, let me tell you that I, I would certainly speak on it as one that's a pilgrim right alongside you. Certainly not one that's already arrived because I'm on that journey myself. But it's always amazing that we ever have an opportunity, if, if Eric and I are ever in a place and we're able to speak about the family, the home, it's always amazing that the number of young men and women that uh, don't have children yet, uh, let alone even married, but they're always come up to us after service and say, Brother Estes, I so appreciate that message. I so appreciate what God's Word had to say because even though I maybe haven't even seen this in my own home, what I want for my home one day is to have a godly, biblical home. So no matter what age you are today, and no matter where you are on this journey, and you say, well, Brother Estes, I, I mean, I've, I've already got grandchildren. Let me tell you something. You still have influence in the life of those grandchildren. Use it wisely. Psalms 127, verse number 1. I trust that you're there. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that built it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows. For so he giveth his beloved sleep. Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord. And the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man... So are children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. Verse number four, one more time. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. I want to speak to us tonight for just a few moments, if the Lord had helped me. I simply want to speak to us on this. Homes that hit the mark. Homes that hit the mark. You going to help me tonight? Let's pray quickly and ask the Lord to help. Father, we thank you for your goodness over us. We thank you for your divine mercy, your grace. We pray in the name of Jesus that your will would be done tonight, that you would open up hearts. Lord, you would take every thought into captivity into the very obedience of Christ. That your will would take place. Lord, I ask you, meet us around these altars. And for this we give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone said amen. amen. Shake somebody's hand as you're being seated. Tell them I'm glad to see you tonight in God's house. Well, let me hear me tonight. There is an all-out, unprecedented attack against our families today. Can you say amen? Even in this own nation of ours, we're seeing things that we've never seen before in ways that we've never seen it before, things that are creeping up, things that are coming out, and it seems like it is all focused on one thing, the demise of the home, the demise of the family, the demise of the moral institution that God has for you and me. It seems like anything at Hollywood would dare be so rude as to belch forth would always be something that would want to destroy the integrity of the father inside of that home if there is a man inside of that he, you know he's a bumbling fool he steps over himself in every move that he makes he can't remember his own name I mean if he is a serious man and he's nearly a psychopath at that and if he's slightly slightly religious in the, in the least then man is he a fanatic and is he a zealot and it's all aimed to do one 
thing to condition a generation that this society can survive without a family unit. Friend, hear me. I've never seen a strong church that wasn't made up of strong families and didn't pray and seek the face of God. Can you say amen? Friend, there's an attack today. And it's trying to eat inside of our culture and eat inside of our churches. And you say, well, Brother Estes, it'll never hit us. It already has, friend. We're already rearing a generation of young men and women that think, well, uh, you know, we know more than, uh, than what God's Word said and we know more than what mothers and fathers that have experienced can say. And God help us, we even have moms and dads I think the only goal that their children should have is just make as much money as they can in life Friend, if you're training your child to be nothing but a money-making machine, they will grow up to be a successful failure. What do you want? I want them to make money. And we've reared a generation to say, do all you can to make money. Do all you can to get loaded. Do all you can to live in the five-story hole. Listen, I'm not against if God blesses you. I'm not against God touching your finances. But hear me, young people, there is something greater that you can instill in your home than having a six-figure salary. It's having the presence of God and having the presence of the Lord. Friend, that's priceless. Listen to this tonight. J. Paul Getty, one of the world's richest men on earth at one time. In his day, he had a net worth of over four billion with a B, billion dollars. In his autobiography he wrote in 1981, he said these words. He said, I've never been given to envy save for the envy I have for those who make a marriage work and endure happily. It's an art that I've never been able to master. He said, my record, five marriages, five divorces in short five failures he termed the memories of his children as painful his most treasured offspring Timothy was his name he was a frail child born to Getty when he was in his late 50s the child died at 12 because of surgical complications his sickly life was spent away from his father who was forever more away on business other members of the family saw tragedy as well a grandson J. Paul III was kidnapped and held for a ransom of two point nine million dollars when Getty refused to pay they cut off that boy's right ear his oldest son committed suicide here is a man that the world would call a success here is a man that the world is telling our young people to emulate and be just like but God's word is 180 degrees in the other direction it said blessed is the man that feareth the Lord blessed is the man that feareth the Lord you want to be blessed start walking with God friend there's an importance that we have to look at today an importance inside of our homes and it starts with moms and it starts with dads it starts with a made up mind that we're going to live for God it starts with a determination that our goals are not going to be the same goals as the world and our objectives are not going to be the same objectives of the world we're not going to think like them we're not going to walk like them we're not going to act like them we would rather have a biblical mindset in our home God's word says it like this except the Lord build the house they labor in vain that build it except the Lord keep the city the watchman waketh in vain it is vain for you to rise up early to sit up late and to eat the bread of sorrow it's amazing that he gives a scripture and says if all you do is be consumed with making as much bread as you can money in other words he said it's the bread of sorrow now listen, friend, hear me. We all have responsibilities. We all have obligations and that's not what God's word is trying to dismiss. There are things we have to do to keep our family moving forward and, he, and no way is God's word trying to diminish that. But when your mindset becomes this, I'll skip out of every church service I can just to make another dollar. I'll skip out of every opportunity I can have to spend time with my family just to make another dollar. God's word said you'll make that bread but it'll be the bread of sorrow. You'll look back and say, all this brought me was hurt. All this brought me was pain. 
Some of you have heard me say it before. I'll say it again. That young man went to the doctor. He told me, he said, that doctor told him. He, he told that doctor, he said, you know, I've been going through so much and uh, I've just got this and got this ailment and this ailment. And the man looked back, the doctor looked back at that man and said, well, the problem is, son, he said, you're, you're, you're burning the candle at both ends. You just got too much going on. That young man looked back at the doctor and said, I am not here for a sermon. I am here for more wax. Just write me a prescription so I can get going. Friend, hear me today. You don't need another prescription to get you going. You need another prayer meeting to stop you and say, God, refocus me. Redirect me. Let my home be first and foremost. He said, you'll lay down in sorrow. You'll wake up in sorrow. And lo, children are a heritage of the Lord and the fruit of the womb is his reward can I stop for just a moment you can't preach a sermon like this without wanting a medal just a touch hallelujah scared now I've seen them walk in and man I mean they had more than 2.3 children national average and people go to raising eyebrows and wondering and start saying snide comments like y'all need to figure out what the problem is and who do you think you are and don't you know how expensive them things are and everything else let me tell you something friend children don't make a rich man poor they make a poor man rich you can't take your money to heaven but by the grace of God I'm going to take them babies to heaven I got an investment in them that's going to last throughout eternity it's amazing. We turn around. We need to pray. We really need some young people. And then we begin to be little people. I'm not talking about having children just, you know, throwing them off on everything else and throwing them off on the government and grandma and grandpa and all that. I am saying this. We talk about how children can be such a misery. That is a European mindset that we have accepted in America. That is a European mentality that says children are nothing but things and weights. And if I didn't have them, then I could have another car and I could have another home. God help us. Young people, you go to public schools, you hear, Brother Zane, don't you accept that mentality? Don't you buy into that trash it's not the truth God's word tell, are you still with me tonight God's word tells us tonight that there's a focus here and children are to be like arrows and parents are to be like archers and the implication is this when we learn how to shoot straight they'll learn how to hit the mark we talk about child children drop out delinquent children there's a whole lot more delinquent mamas and delinquent daddies than they are delinquent children the reason them babies is delinquent is because a mom and daddy shirked their duty and walked away from their responsibility God's word tells us tonight as arrows are in the hand of a mighty man God's word tells us tonight the archer must be strong friend if we're going to shoot our children in the right way that means we've got to be strong as arrows are in the hands of a mighty man. He's not referring to physical strength here. He's not referring to somebody that's six, six foot four and can bench press 380 pounds. He's not referring to a physical strength, but a spiritual strength as arrows are in the hand of a mighty man. No, no matter how fine the arrows may be, if they're going to hit the mark, there's got to be an enormous amount of strength that can pull back that bow and smoothly release that arrow it takes practice it takes skill it takes determination and the same is true for you and me we gotta practice but we gotta be strong when we're doing that hey it takes strength friend to look at a world that says you do anything you want you act any way you want you dress any way you want. You go anywhere you want. And there's no consequences. It takes strength for a mama and a daddy and a grandpa and a grandma to stand up and say, as for me and my home, we're going to serve the Lord. We're not going to do that. We're not well, I don't care if everybody else is doing that. We're going to stay with God. That takes strength, friend. That takes strength when the world looks at you 
and says now aren't you being just a little extreme with our young people aren't you being just a little extreme you know they got to express themselves they got to go sow their wild oats and here's the problem they sow wild oats and you think they can have crop failure it don't work like that you're going to sow what you reap it takes strength to look at loved ones and even family members and say we can't do that we're not going there we're not acting like that let me tell you something, friend. Hey, some folks out there, go ahead and say it, son. They, they, let, their, they let their little girls walk outside. Well, let's close and what I let my little girls go to sleep with. And then they're going to turn around and say, well, you know, when they get 15, 16 years old, I guess we'll start dealing with it. When they get 15, 16 years old, they, you are not going to deal with it. They're going to deal with you. You don't start when they're 16. You don't start when they're 18. Well, I'll deal with that young man's mouth when he's 18. Here's the problem. You are 18 years and 100. 185 pounds late. It takes strength to look at a world that's on its way to hell and say, We don't believe what that public school is telling. It takes strength to pull back that bow and say, We don't believe that there's trash that says man can marry man that can marry man that can marry whatever it, come on young people it, I just had a young man tell me the other day he said I was he goes to public school he said I was in class they did I didn't ask them they asked me they asked me what do I think about that, that perverted marriage and I said back to him I don't believe it's of the Bible I believe God made male and he made female and that's what God desires as soon as I said it my teacher said to me you you can't say those words in this class he said I stood back and looked at her and said ma'am you are the one that asked me and I'm going to tell you what I'm going to say what God's word said beloved hear me that takes strength it takes strength to look at other young men walking down that hallway I say I'm not going to do that I'm not going to be that it takes strength young lady to say if every other girl is doing it and think it's in and hip and cool and everything else, I'm not going to go down that road. I'm telling you, it takes strength to pull back that bow. It takes strength to live right and to live holy. Listen, beloved. There are times, yes, we. There are times that the, the mark can be missed. Indeed, there are such things as bad arrows. You know what? I can show you in God's word good men that had godly lives, and yet their children went astray. And I can also show you, show you ungodly men that somehow or another had a godly family and children. I understand that's possible, but that's not an excuse for us shirking our duty as being a biblical home. Friend, hear me. The responsibility is on our hearts. And my responsibility as a dad is to shapen, to sharpen, and to shoot my arrows. Brother Zane, what's your job? You're a preacher. No, that's my calling. <laughs> but my job, I shapen, I sharpen, and I shoot those little arrows. That means every single day. That means every little thing we do. That means how we interact with each other. That means how we communicate with each other. That means how we communicate husband and wife. That means how we communicate to our children. That means how we value what we value, when we go, how we go. That means everything that we do, all that is encompassed inside of there. My responsibility is to shape it and to sharpen and to shoot the arrows that God has put in my life. strong men to do that take strong hearts to do that preach on brother Estes I will friend hear me the archer must be strong the arrows must be sharp you do realize that now I'm not talking about your children but maybe just mine huh? children are not born straight arrows limbs are about like that you got to shape them. You got to shape them. You got to sharpen them. I mean, they don't naturally just grow out of that. Ooh, boy, look at that perfectly pre packaged arrow. I'll just put that back there. 
hug his neck when he graduates and tell him what a fine son he was. Don't work like that. You got to get them when they're little. And you got to start shaping them. And you got to start sharpening them. And contrary to what your evolutionary believing teacher tells you, man's not getting better and better and smarter than smarter. Man is getting worse and worse. You say, brother, that's just you don't believe in evolution. No, I'll tell you why I don't believe in evolution. Because Christianity is a thinking man's religion. You gotta be a thinker if you're gonna believe in Jesus. You ain't gotta be a thinker if you believe you come from a monkey. You just gotta accept it. You do, young people, you do realize there is no evidence whatsoever that you ever come from a tadpole and a monkey. It takes faith, and I'm talking about whopper jaw. I'm talking about blue ribbon. I'm talking about jumbo size faith. I mean, it takes blind faith. Believe you come from a tadpole. You know why? Because there's never been one ounce of example of true quote unquote evolution. Go back and tell your biology teacher I said so, huh? Hey, my tax dollars are paying for that teacher's salary, so it's okay. Hello. Friend, hear me. Oh, you well, I tell you what we'll do. We'll just send we'll just send them to school and they'll teach them values. They'll teach them values, but it ain't gonna be your values, and it sure ain't gonna be God's values. Well, we'll just we'll just we'll send them off, and somebody else will teach them what to. No, sir, you 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 better show them what God wants. You better show them what God wants in His Word. You can't just say, "Well, the school will do it." You can't just say, "Well, teachers better teach, better teach them what God." No, they're not gonna do that. It's gotta be our responsibility. I sat down with. Brother Doug Phillips, day before yesterday, Monday, I believe it was, and we began to talk about his family strengthening conference. It's coming up November the 9th. If you have an opportunity to go, I encourage you to go. He began to tell me that there were some that was obviously quite vociferous about not wanting a family conference, and they said, well, we didn't need one when we grew up. Why do we need one now? And I looked at Brother Doug Phillips, and he's, he's a precious brother, great man of God. I said, Brother Doug, here's the difference. Fifty years ago... Society was a net. Today, society is a trap. Fifty years ago, you know, I mean, a man didn't pay his bills, didn't take care of his children. I mean, he's that's an outcast. That would be a rarity. Now, now it is countercultural just to find a dad that wants to work five days a week and take care of his family. Now it is countercultural to find a family that brings their children to church, not just drop their children off at church. Friend, I'm telling you, if we're going to have sharp arrows, it's going to be us that has to do it. Can I read to you a little bit more? I mean, you seem so enthralled the first time. Maybe I can get away with it a second time, huh? Listen, I... Does this give you the same, what's the word I can use and still sound spiritual? Creeps. Does this give you the same creeps that it gives me? No longer does he or she need to sit in your big easy chair while you read Jack and the Beanstalk. Now there's a professional storyteller called the television. It doesn't doze off or become impatient. You can work those few extra hours earning a little more money so you can have a bigger TV. Now you can put him in the hands of a professional educator who will have him from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. five days a week and he'll tell him about the birds and the bees. Then you'll have more time to accumulate things. You can work a few more hours and pay a professional to mow the lawn and to wash the car. Your child will not have to learn responsibilities and discipline of any kind. You can enroll your child and have a professional teach them how to throw a ball and you can take that valuable time you would have spent in the backyard making one more dollar to keep up with the neighbors. If you work a few extra hours, you can send him to someone who will teach him how to ride a bike. You won't have to waste your weekends following someone around on training wheels. Why, with all your extra money, you can spend your time on the golf course relaxing from all the added stress you've been putting in at work. When he gets into high school, you'll be able to afford a professional guidance counselor who will give him ideas about his future. Your extra money will pay for that too. A professional can teach him how to drive a car and when you, then you can buy him a brand new car. 
No need to get your hands greasy side by side in the garage while you teach them how to clean plugs and change an oil filter. You've got way more important things to take, take care of. You know, stuff that really matters. Is something wrong with that? Is something odd with that? And as odd as that sounds to you and me, you talk to some of these young people that are in this house tonight and they'll tell you, Brother Estes, that is my world. That's my world. That's normal to me. Young people, it shouldn't be normal. You say, Brother Estes, I can't change it. You may not be able to go in the past, but today you can make up your mind starting now. I can start a legacy that will follow God's word. I can break the chain that goes from broken hearts to broken homes to broken hearts to broken homes. And I can have a healed heart and I can have a redeemed home and I can rear my children in the fear and admonition of the Lord and God can do a work in my life. I'll close. I'll close. How do we sharpen arrows? I've got plenty, but I'll I'll move on quickly. Number one, begin early. Don't I don't know if they passed or not. California was contemplating passing a law that said you cannot correct your children uh, until they're at least three years old. I don't know if it passed or didn't. Let me tell you, if you never correct that child until they turn three. You fill in the blanks, okay? We don't have enough CD space for me to go there, all right? Number two, be creative. Be creative. If all you ever do is bring them to church to learn about the ways of God, church ain't getting in your home. <laughs> you understood that, didn't you? If all you do is say, well, here, here they are. Start Sunday school. It's... I mean, I'm glad they get to color. I'm glad they get to hear a story. I'm glad they even get a cookie sometimes, huh? But unless you're saying, let God get in our home, then you're missing the mark. Now, I haven't done this yet, but here's, here's, our, here's our next goal. Here's our next thing. When I go back to the house, I got a day scheduled over at my dad's Saturday, and I'm going to go back to my old closet. I'm going to find my marbles. I hadn't lost my marbles. <laughs> Although we've been on the road a mighty long time, honey. I'm going to find those marbles. And here's the deal. It's going to be an empty jar, okay? Now, they don't get a marble if they do something good. But if Savannah sees Ashlyn doing something good or Ashlyn sees Annalise or Annalise sees... Or what, if one sees another doing something good and they come and tell Dad, look how good so-and-so is doing. Look at this. Guess what? Now we get a marble in the jar. Now they can't get it on their own, but they got to show somebody else. Dad, Ashton's doing good. Dad, my sister's doing. Now what am I trying to do? I'm trying to instill in them, be ye kind one to another. I'm trying to instill in them a biblical principle, think about others. I'm trying to instill in them a biblical principle that says, care about your sisters and try to find something good rather than trying to find something. Now, guess, whenever, whenever that jar hits, the, I mean, whenever it hits the top and we're full of marbles, I mean, man, it's, it's donut time or, you know, Chris, it's about as wild as it gets at the Estes house, but man, it gets good. Hallelujah. I mean, we'll go out and we'll find something. To, all I'm saying is let's look for ways that we can show God's word to our children and grandchildren. Close, Brother Estes. Okay, I will. The archer has got to be strong. The aim, or the arrow rather, has got to be sharp. The aim has got to be sure. As arrows are in the hands of a mighty man, verse number 4, so are the children of the youth, verse 5, happy is the man that hath his quiver full and they shall not be ashamed but they shall listen speak with the enemies in the gate do you know why do you know why we raise a godly home why we raise a godly family because there's a world out there every single day pressing against us telling us accept our values bow to our bell and worship our dollar you know what we're going to do? We're going to take those arrows.
We're going to look right at them. And we're going to say, these kids are going to be so full of the Holy Ghost. They're not going to be running in a corner. They're going to be shot right on the corner. They're going to be shot right in front of your street. And you know what? We're going to raise them to fear God. And you know what? We're going to even raise them to vote right. How about that? We're going to raise them to live right. We're going to raise them to stand up. We're going to raise them to live for God. We're going to raise them that every time they walk into Walmart, somebody says there's hope. We're going to raise them that every time they see somebody going down the street, they say here's another opportunity to share the Lord. We're aiming them. We're aiming them. Right at the enemy. Now, brother, Mr. McKelvey, I don't know. Right now, I got three little arrows, okay? That's what I got. But God help me to shape them. God help me to sharpen them. And one day, God help me to shoot them. And shoot them in the right way. Erica, can you help me tonight, honey? God help me to shoot them in the right direction. Brother Zane, what if, what if God calls one of them, listen, into ministry? I'm not forcing any of my kids into ministry, but I can tell you one thing. I want them to grow up saying that's the greatest thing God could ever do to a life. I got no war stories. Listen, God has been good to the Estes family, okay? Somebody asked, well, Brother Zane, don't, aren't there a lot of bad things out on the field? Hadn't you had some bad situations? Let me tell you, I've had so many good situations. And I've met so many good people that if there were any bad things, friend, all I can tell you is the good things is way overwhelmed them. And I'm not about to start bringing up the bad things and I sure ain't about to bring them up to my kids. And if there is a situation in the church, I can tell you what, that'll be something that me and my wife are talking about in private. But I don't want to bring it up in front of them babies and ever give a bad taste in their mouth for church because I just may shoot one of them over there, over there. Hey, I, I may shoot one of them at just a local church being a good, faithful member. What's your aim? Boy, you hope they marry a millionaire? Let me tell you something. I would rather my girls marry a man that didn't have a cent and was worth a million than marry a man that had a million and wasn't worth a cent. I don't know what your goal is. I don't know what your aim is. But friend, as for our home, I want to shoot him toward God. I want to shoot him toward a godly life. I want to shoot him toward a holy life. I want to shoot him toward a sanctified life. I want to let him know you can walk with God. You can live with God. God can walk with you. I want to hit the mark. How about you? Sister Erica, you can start any time you'd like. <coughs> Third John said it like this. One in verse four. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth I tell you what man once they get out of your hands boy it's hard to determine which way that arrow is going to go and once they get out of your hands I mean it's hard to push that arrow but oh while I got a chance young people well you got a chance start them young determine every day we're going to talk about God. God's going to come up in our everyday conversation. It's further than just saying, okay, kids, sit down. We're going to have a 20-minute Bible study on that missing goat in the book of Leviticus. Now, y'all sit there and don't yawn to death. It's as Deuteronomy said, and you're coming in and you're going out, and you're rising up and you're sitting down. In other words, you just come in, and indirectly, non-directly, you just bring up something about God's Word and those little ears catch it. You're rising up and you're sitting down. You're coming in, you're going out. You just talk about something that somebody did good at church and little ears catch that. God help us to hit the mark. Now you're here tonight and you say, well, 
Brother Estes, uh, my children are already grown. And those arrows are out of my hand. Let me tell you something. God has a way of healing years gone by and past things. And you can still have an influence and a shaping process on those children. No matter how old they are. And you can have a shaping process. And you can help shape those little arrows of those grand youngins. When they come over to grandma's house and grandpa's house. And they can see. We want to hit the mark. We want to hit the mark. We want to hit the mark. God give us homes that hit the mark. Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed. First of all, let me talk to some young people in here. You say, Brother Estes, I... I don't have a home as far as a family of my own yet. I'm not on my own. I'm still under a mom and her dad's roof or whatever it may be. But Brother Estes, I want a holy home. I want a family that functions like the Bible functions. I'm not saying there won't be stressful days. I'm not saying there won't be disagreements. I'm telling you, you young person can have a biblically sound home. Young person, I'm talking to you first and foremost. If that's you and you're in this house and you say, Brother Estes, that's what I want. I want you to slip up your hand for just a second and say, that's me. That's me. Maybe not today. Maybe not tomorrow, but one day and someday soon. Oh, I want God to do that. I want God to do that. Let me tell you, nearly every young person in this house has raised their hand. I believe they mean that. Moms and dads, We've got a task before us. Grandmas and grandpas, you're not exempt. We need your help. We need your influence. We need your prayers. We need you to come alongside us. And God can make our communities livable again because we're aiming our arrows right at that enemy and showing them what God's Word can produce. I'm going to invite every last one of us. Can we step out from where we're sitting this evening? And can we come around these altars? Can we ask God to do that in our homes? Lord, help us to hit a mark. I don't want to miss it, God. I don't want them just to train them to keep their mind on the thrills and the spills and the glitter of this world. I don't want their, I don't want their heroes to be sports stars and superstars. I'd rather them be godly men and godly women. I'd rather them be biblical heroes and preachers and missionaries and evangelists. God, let us hit the mark. Oh
to be 